there. It's World Book Day this week and to take part and to celebrate all the fantastic books that you can get out there, we've selected 10 of our favourite books to do with plants, gardens, growing, um, conservation, the climate. Um, they're, they're for primary school children um, and I'll start with the very the youngest one first. This one is called Ten Seeds. It's by Youth, Ruth Brown. Um, and it starts off with 10 seeds being planted in the ground. It's a counting book, so you're sort of counting down. And then as you go through, different things happen to each of the seeds, which show, just shows you how nature takes its course with the different um, seeds that get planted in the ground and the dangers that are out there for little seeds. Um, but it sort of shows that even though you plant 10 seeds, you may not actually end up with 10 plants. That's all part of the process. But at the end, you will end up hopefully with at least one plant where you will get 10 more seeds. And so the cycle starts again. It's got really lovely illustrations. It's a nice hardback book. So that's 10 seeds. That's, for, that's a counting book. The next one we've got is actually a book made by two people who work at the South London Botanical Institute. It's written by Caroline Pankhurst and it's illustrated by Maud Smith, who's one of our volunteers. It's a lovely story about guinea pigs, guinea pig gardeners. In fact, it's called the Guinea Pig Gardeners and it's about a sort of grumpyish um, guinea pig called Humphrey and his sister, Daisy. Um, Humphrey loves carrots more than anything and mint tea um, but he realises that if he wants to get all the plants that he loves he needs to have plants for pollinators so he and Daisy go about making um, a little garden to plant for pollinators and um, it's got these really cute illustrations of them going about their work meeting into lot, meeting lots of other people in the garden, like the slugs and the snails. Um, and of course they end up having a lovely tea at the end with carrot cake and mint tea. It's a really nice small book as well, one that you can just put in your bag to take with you. This one you'll probably recognize. This is called, Oh, Say Can You See? It, it, um, it's, it's a Dr. Zeus book, but it's not actually written by Dr. Zeus. It was written after his time, I think, but it's written in the style of Dr. Zeus. It's got the same sort of pictures as the, doctor, the traditional classic Dr. Zeus books, but, and it's all written in rhyme. For example, this bit on leaves. Leaves come in all shapes and all sizes I found, some small and some spiky, some big and some round. But the thing that all leaves have in common is this, they make their own food by photosynthesis. Um, and it goes through about that, it talks about roots, leaves, seeds, fruits, and how important planets, um, pl plants are to us on the planet, is what I'm trying to say. Um, the fourth book is quite an old book. You might need to get this on a secondhand book website. It's called The Pip Book by um, Keith Mossman and um, it hasn't got amazing fancy illustrations. Um, it's got very simple black and white illustrations but it's, it's written in a really nice easy way to read um, and it just gives you very simple instructions on how to grow a variety of different things from a pip like it's got the citrus family it will tell you how to grow oranges and lemons um, it tells you um, how to do some kitchen scrap gardening, um, just growing vegetables from scraps that you find in your kitchen. It also tells you how you can plant trees from seed, uh, like ash, beech and oak. It's got a section on how to try bonsai, bonsai for beginners. And last but not least, it's got some of the more exotic ones at the end, like loquat. Um, pomegranate, uh, kiwis that you can give a go inside the house as well. So that's a really lovely first experimenting with pips and seeds books. This next one is called Foraging with Kids. This is a nice hardback book. Um, 
So this is a great one for grown-ups to be able to do with children. It's got, um, it's got lots of really easy things for you to forage. And it's got these nice, simple black and white illustrations, which you can actually colour if you want to. I mean, I would colour them with um, coloured pencil, not felt tips, otherwise it'll just go through. But like for each section, this one's on the rows. It tells you, it shows you what it looks like. It tells you where you'll find it. It gives you names from around the world. Um, it tells you how you can make some rose leaf tea, um, rose hip syrup from when you've got a sore throat, you're feeling a bit under the weather, rose petal sandwiches. Never tried that one personally. Um, so for each section, there's another one here on Heather. Heather tea, um, relaxing Heather bath mix, something you could make for Mother's Day maybe. Um, so that's a lovely first book for foraging with kids. This next one is a garden journal. Now you don't actually need a book to do a garden journal. You could just get a nice notebook. But this one's just got a really nice layout. Um, <clears throat> it's got lots of tips, first of all, on compost, weeds, soil, um, you can make a little garden wish list, but it tells you how you can put together your planting records. So it's basically just got a nice template that you can use with the common name, botanical name, the date, um, special care needed. You can put a little picture or a drawing in there. Um, so it, it's just a good guide. Um, I found it really useful when I was teaching um, to just print off and get the kids to fill in. Um, it's also got a section at the back where you can write what worked well in the spring, in the summer. Um, and it's got lots of garden layout ideas as well. Um, so that's just quite a good book to help you um, start with your garden journaling. This next one, a kid's herbs book, it's, it's, so, it's quite similar to the foraging one. Um, but it's not specifically about foraging, it's about a lot more. For each section, you have there's there are songs in there, there's recipes, there's stories, there's some of the folklore um, that surround the plants. So it's so for example, this one, the plantain, the bee sting plant. Um, it talks about what it's used for, um, how you can make poultices, you can make bandages, um, you can do. There's a song, there's a story. Um, and for each section, you've got lots of lovely illustrations and what the plant is good for. Um, so similar to the foraging one, but it's not specifically about foraging. It's got lots more about each plant as well. This next one is a really lovely book um, written by Michael Holland, um, who's, who's um, done lots of work for us at the South London Botanical Institute, but he was based as head of education at the Chelsea Physic Garden for many years. He's written this book called I Ate Sunshine for Breakfast. It's illustrated by Philip Giordano as well, and the illustrations are just out of this world, gorgeous. The paper's lovely, smells nice, it's got fun ideas that you can try at home, like this one is all about leaf printing, you can make your own slime, but it will answer every question that you have about plants as well. It talks about the importance of plants, how they grow, um, the materials you can make from them. Um, you really will learn so much from looking through this book. And this doesn't just have to be for primary school children. This could be for anybody all the, all the way up to 100, I reckon. This is probably my very favourite book. This one's called The Magic of Trees. I have a big soft spot for trees. Um, and this really does tell you all about the magic and the mystery of trees. It starts off simply just by telling you what is a tree. But then it goes through so much more to tell you all about the different parts of the tree. It talks to you about the trunk and the bark and how you can recognise different types of bark. It talks about flowers, um, life after death and how trees are important even after they've, they're not living anymore. The different habitats it goes through, um, how a tree defends itself. Um, it's also got a whole section on... Um, plants or trees and the planet and it's even got a little how to correctly plant a tree 
at the end if you decide that that's what you want to do as well. And the last book is a really good book. This is about George Washington Carver. He was an American botanist, did really incredible work over there. He's, he's not heard of often over here. Um, he was born into, he was enslaved. He was born into a, um, a slave family. Um, unfortunately, his mother um, and father were killed. Um, and he was raised by um, the slave family, the Carvers. Um, and because he was quite a sickly child, he ended up working a lot um, in the house and in the garden where he became completely entranced by, by plants um, and spent hours and hours and hours just watching and observing them. Again, really nice illustrations in here. Um, he became so good with plants that people started to come to him. They called him the plant doctor. Um, there he is there giving out some advice on how to look after plants but he you know he left at a very young age to go off to school and then university he worked incredibly hard and he came up with the idea of rotating crop so you don't always grow the same crop at that time it was probably cotton exclusively which took a lot from the soil so he encouraged people to grow different types of um, crops, specifically the peanut. Uh, so he was called the peanut wizard um, and he started a school to help um, poor farmers to grow different types of crops that would make them healthier and which would bring them more income. So he did incredibly important work within the United States. Um, okay, that's the, that's the tenth book. Um, I've put them all on a sheet like this. So you've got five on the front, five on the back, just in case you can't remember everything that I've said, you can find that on our website under school visits and events. Okay, I hope you have a really great World Book Day and that you will try out some of these great books that we've recommended at the South London Botanical Institute. Okay, bye.